I remember getting my first look at Photoshop back in the late 1980s. Back then we didn't have much RAM and we had to run it on a, on a really low res big screen. <laughs> Today we have iPads and Android tablets and lots of other things. We're going to hear about how Adobe is taking Photoshop into this new world. Who are you? I'm Brian O'Neill Hughes, the Senior Product Manager for Photoshop. I've been on the team about 12 years, all that time on the Photoshop team. Wow, you've seen quite a, been quite a range of changes. A lot of changes. What's happening with uh, Photoshop this year? Well, there's a very exciting free update coming uh, for everyone who has CS5 or anyone who gets it uh, after the update. And it's going to allow Photoshop to communicate with devices. Obviously, we have a lot of different devices out there. And suddenly, Photoshop will be able to communicate back and forth with all of them. Uh, it's platform agnostic, so iOS, Android, RIM, uh, pretty much anything with Wi-Fi connection can now talk to Photoshop. So how, how is this happening? Because in my mind, Photoshop was a Mac app that you loaded on a Mac or a Windows app that you loaded on Windows. How is my iPad talking to that original app? Yeah, a tiny bit of background. So Photoshop, a big part of Photoshop being an imaging platform is its extensibility. So in the past, that's meant that plugins can read different file formats, you know, anything from the Hubble Space Telescope to all these raw files, or extend the, the filtering capability, or extend what you can push out. And this update is going to allow it to talk to devices over a local network. So essentially anything that can be scripted, which is just about anything that can be recorded in history, can be called from an external device. So that device could be a tablet, a phone, a camera, uh, just about anything. And it needs to be on the same Wi-Fi network. Right? Yeah, a little local network, although other people can log into that. It's password protected. It's not going over the web. It's just established locally. Uh, and if the apps break contact, once they reestablish it, they pick up communicating where they left off. Now, it's not the full Photoshop on, on an iPad, right? You're... Certainly important to distinguish that, yeah. yeah. We're not taking Photoshop and pushing it onto the tablet. The tablet doesn't have the uh, hardware chops for that. Uh, but what we're doing is we're leveraging the strengths of the tablet, so touch, uh, interaction, you know, a lot of the fun of it, but then picking up where that leaves off with the power and precision and editability and millions of things you can do in Photoshop, passing those files over. Now, is, is there a, an SDK with a bunch of APIs that Photoshop is sharing from my uh, home Mac right. to uh, the client that's uh, the, the iPad? Yeah, so we've got a brand new SDK. In fact, that's out there and available right now. We're doing a pretty massive outreach to our developers. Uh, developers mean something entirely different than they did because a lot more people uh, can communicate with Photoshop. So it doesn't just mean having a plug-in. And that's really the release, is the Software Development Kit, or SDK. We will have three apps that we'll release to showcase just some of what's possible, uh, but we're the most excited for what our developers are going to do with it. Uh, how what percentage of the features of Photoshop is shared through this new API, this new wireless API? Just about everything. The only things that don't come through in scripting uh, are things like brush strokes and, and things like that. Okay. Uh, but we can round trip files, so you can do some really interesting things. So essentially you can drive Photoshop from an external device. You can call tools, filters, sliders, you can input values, and you can bring files in and push files out. So we can round trip files back and forth. We can do some really interesting things. Uh, you so can imagine. you build a new kind of app, for instance, on the iPad that does maybe high uh, definition, high uh, the HDR photography, the, uh, you know, the ability to see multiple light levels in a different way and have a slide, slider with your finger to you name see it. different kinds of things? You can do anything. Uh, what's, you know, one of the coolest things is seeing you've got 6,000 something applications just in the photography space on some of these mobile devices. Uh, you've got all sorts of creative uh, apps you know, on the iPad and whatnot. Those can hand their low res files off to Photoshop. Yeah. We can interpolate them. We could you know, layer it as we do with our, our finger painting application Easel. Uh, and you could do all sorts of things from there and then you could bounce them back. Because I think in the case of the iPad or an Android tablet, it's really a good portfolio. So that, uh, that exchange of images is, is really important. What are the three apps that you've built for the iPad to prove this concept? Yeah, so there's Color Lava, which is mixing colors, which is the exact sort of thing you want to do when you pick up an iPad. You know, it's finger, dragging your fingers around, mixing colors. You can open an image and reference the image for your colors. Even though it's not a really precise piece of hardware, we're capturing the RGB and HSB or hue saturation brightness values. And then we can send that over to Photoshop either as swatches, individual colors, or we can send an email that has all that information, including the accompanying image that talks directly to Photoshop. 
The other one is called Nav, and Nav proves how we can drive Photoshop. So we can exchange files, we can call individual tools, we can build our own subset of tools. You know, Photoshop has over 70 tools, but we only show about a third of them. So I saw the crop tool, for instance. What can you do with that? So you can, you can select all of your tools in Photoshop from the tablet. So it could be an alternative input, um, it could be a subset of tools, it could be different tools for retouching or painting. You can sort of Lego together your own toolbox. But what it's really showing you is that it could drive anything in Photoshop. So it's, it's sort of a proof of concept that also has some functional value. This might be really cool for a, a graphic artist who works with Photoshop all day long. They'll, they'll have their iPad here and other devices here and they can just select tools by touching the iPad app? Absolutely. Yeah, oh, one of the top requests cool. we get is customizing the toolbar, and that's exactly what you can do with half of Nav. The other half, I think is really exciting, and we're using it in-house daily, is that you can throw files back and forth. So up to 200 files that are open in Photoshop are immediately pushed over to the iPad, and that's obviously a very nice browsing and viewing experience. You can take it down the hall, you can review them, you can get information, you can even create new documents from the iPad. Uh, makes for a great uh, portfolio. That's interesting. So if I was doing a new logo for Adobe, for instance, I could push them, push the five comps that I'm working on to my iPad and then walk over and say, do you like any of these? Absolutely. And if you uh, broke that network connection, as soon as it was reestablished, it would just communicate back and forth. So if you'd closed one in Photoshop or voted it out, it would be closed on the iPad at that point. Got it. Got it. What's the third app? The third one is called Easel. And it's a finger painting application that's somewhat unique in that there is no interface. The interface follows your fingers. As soon as you lift your fingers, it disappears. So you can concentrate just on the touch, tactile fun of painting. Uh, it's very fluid. The colors bleed together. Where it's really unique, beyond not having an interface, is that you can send files to Photoshop. We up res them, and we throw a layer on there. So we acknowledge that this is fun, this is interactive, this is an enjoyable way to paint. But somewhere along the line, if you want to take that further, we give you a great mechanism for doing that. Very cool. And it's just put your five fingers on the iPad and the interface shows up. That's right. And you lift them and you control color, opacity, brush size, or the ability to transmit the files. What's Adobe learning by doing these weird UIs? Are we going to see more of that in the future? Uh, so the easel especially was a great experience in breaking the rules. Because I think a lot of what you see with these mobile applications is people stuffing a desktop UI onto a small device that doesn't really have that sort of precision. And so we really challenged ourselves to think outside the box and, in this case, really dismiss the UI and have fun with it. Because that's the common thing with all these apps, is they're all fun and tactile and interactive. And we wanted to really play into that on the mobile device, the iPad especially. And then when you get to Photoshop, you have that precision and power. Back on our Mac or on our PC, are we going to notice any other changes on, on Photoshop? That's been the update. Uh, anytime we do an update, we do performance tuning, uh, bug fixing, and whatnot. We've done a few updates, and I can tell you that CS5 is several times more stable than CS4, which is pretty remarkable when you consider that we also went 64-bit native. So our most innovative release, our fastest release, one of our most sec successful releases, uh, and a very stable release as well. So that just keeps getting better and better with each iteration. Very cool. Well, we're looking forward to seeing where else you take this uh, API idea and turn Photoshop into something we can use on any device. Us too. For as exciting as it is today with the apps that we're rolling out, it's what our developers are going to do with the software development kit that we're the most excited about. Very cool. Where do we learn more about it? Photoshop.com is a great place to look. That's a new site that we've just put together. It's got videos on all the apps and a lot of information, links to the software development kit, and of course Adobe.com has a much uh, as well. Also Facebook is a great place. We just went over two million fans, and there's a lot of information and videos there as well. Very cool. Thanks so much. Nice joining you. Thanks. Thank you.